Hello, my name is Carlos Magalhães. I am a certified structural engineer from Brazil. I've got a master degree in structural engineer from the State University of Campinas. I'm currently working on design of two connections, and today I would like to share a summary for designing fillet welds for SKU single plate connections. First of all, I would like to discuss the root opening. According to the welding code AWS D1.1, the part to be joined by fillet weld shall be brought as close as possible. However, it is allowed to leave a root opening, which is the distance between the two plates of 3 over 16 inches, this distance. If this condi condition is not met, it is necessary to bevel the plate in order to close the gap. The equation in order to calculate the R is this one, uh, is basically have the TP with, which is the thickness of the plate and the sign of the skew angle. For example, if you have a three quarter plate with a skew angle of 10 degree, you're gonna have a point or teen root opening. In this situation, beveling is not required. However, if you have the same plate with a 20 degree skew angle, you're going to have a root opening larger than the 3 over 16, and this situation is necessary to bevel the plate. It is also important to mention the table 10-14C from the 15th edition of the ASC manual. It provides well detail for skill single plate connections. However, it's limited to the range between 5 over 16 and 5 over 8 plates, and also to scale angles between 0 and 45 degrees. Additionally, when the angle between the two plates to be joining is less than 60 degrees and greater than 30 degrees, the Z-loss factor has to be considered. The Z-loss is the dimension which is used to account for the likely incidence of a poor quality welding in the root of a joint with a small angle. This value is a function of the diagonal angle, the welding process, and the weld position. You can see from this image, when you have a welding between 30 and 60 degrees, you have this small portion, which is the Z-loss, which is not possible to be fully welded, or probably is going to be a poor quality welding. According to the welding code, for welds between parts with surface meeting at an angle less than 90 degrees or greater than 100 degrees, the contract document shall specify the effective stroke. However, on the shop drawings, the detailed arrangement of welds are required to account for the fact of joint geometry and the Z-loss reduction for the process to be used and also the diagonal angle. So if you are a structural engineer and provide uh, the, the design of two connections, you must specify the effect is throat on the sketch. However, if you are checking the shop drawings, you must check each individual dimension in order to guarantee the effective show specified by the ER is respected. Other very common issue is the difference between leg face and leg size for skew plate. The leg face P is specified for weld size for perpendicular plates. Which means when we have our orthogonal plate, a perpendicular plate, a skew plate, you must specify this value and the effective throat is exactly 0.707 of this dimension. However, when we have a skew plate, it's very difficult to measure this dimension. And for practical reasons, we have to measure the leg size in this position and this position. You can see the value of B, the leg face, equals T divided by half of the diagonal angle. And for the leg size, it equals two times the effective throat and half the sine of the angle, the diagonal angle. 
The figure on the left shows the fillet weld gauge used to measure the weld size. You can see the dimension which is measured by this instrument. It would be very, very difficult to take the leg face and to measure this dimension. On the right, we have the equations we must use in order to calculate the leg size. It considers the Z loss and the root open for the smaller angle and the effective throat and the diagonal angle for the other side. Now I'd like to develop this example. I have a three quarter plate with a skew angle of 35 degrees. The effective throw specified would be 0.70758 of TP. These conditions came from ASC manual page 10-18 and it will develop the strength of either a 36 KSI or 50 KSI plate. Uh, this condition ensures the plate will yield before the weld fails. First of all, we must calculate the root opening, which e equals the thickness of the plate sine of the angle, the skew angle, and we have 0.43. Because this dimension is larger than 3 over 16, we must bevel the plate as shown in the picture. And we must calculate the leg size for the left, for the right and the left. For the right, we have two times the T1 calculated with 0.70758 of 3 quarter plus the Z loss in this position plus times sine of half of this angle. And this in this situation, R is zero because the plate will be bevel. And for the other side, we have two times T2, which is just 0.7758 or three quarters. We don't have a Z loss in this side. And 180 minus 55, which is 125 degrees divided by two. So this will give me 0.42 for the right and 0.587 for the left. And we're going to have 7 over 16 and 5 over 8 for the welding. When the angle between the two connecting plates is small, the AWS states that the weld deposited in acute angles less than 30 degrees shall not be considered as effective in transmitting applied force. In this situation, we must use a pre-qualified CGP welding as the one shown in this picture, which came from the figure 5.5 or AWS G1.1. This quick presentation was developed with the aid of two great publications, Designing Welds for Skew Shear Tabs by Carlo Lini and Design Filled Welds for Skew T Joint from Duan Kim Ilid and also the AWS D1.1 and the ASC uh, 15 edition manual. Feel free to read me if you have any questions on either on Instagram or YouTube. Thank you very much.